I'm Heather McDonald and welcome to On the Town Auburn and today we're at our own Auburn Municipal Airport where we're going to interview the head of the Auburn Aviation Association, talk to some pilots, just have some fun out here at the Auburn Airport. Auburn Aviation Association with the president, Wayne Mooneyham. Welcome to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm an outgoing president. This is my last month as president. But you were here three terms in the association, I, I've right? I've done my turn uh, three times now, so it's been a uh, rewarding experience for me, and I'm not ruling it out as uh, another go-around in the future. Well, you know about our Auburn Airport here for sure and you're also a pilot here. I am a pilot and I know a little bit about the airport. <laughs> and so I was reading where it started back what 1934 it was built? 1934 it was built by the federal government and it was uh, primarily a airmail pilot uh, not necessarily a stop but uh -huh. a place to land if they needed to weather or malfunction or whatever which was a common occurrence back in those days. Yeah, and I imagine with all the, the mining here and all that, it was an important stop. Then how did it grow? Well, uh, after the war, a group of citizens got together and pooled their money and in concert with the city, bought the property and they have now about 285 acres of which wow. 80 acres is for the industrial and business park which is on the property, which is an island, so to speak, from uh -huh. Auburn's uh, main downtown area. So we are uh, an island of uh, possession for the city. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a bit of industrial work and companies out here, some wow. of them are fairly major, on the park or in the business park. Wow, I didn't know that. So it's something more than an airport. Yes, it is. and. It's a fun place to be. I love coming here and eating at Wings and you can watch the planes come in and take off. And it's, it's a, really a fun place for the public can come in here. Uh, it's easy access for the public. That's one mm -hmm. of the attractions. It's also a destination airport for uh, pilots because of the really nice restaurant that they have here, Wings. So uh, that's another attraction. Gives the pilot an excuse to use that airplane now <laughs> for uh, the hundred dollar hamburger, so they say. So they say, <laughs> yes. In fact, I was uh, telling him that when we used to fly, it was like, okay, which airport has the best food? <laughs> because we're flying in there to eat. And uh, Wings, of course, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, other things are happening here, like, can you learn to fly here? Well, yes, you can. We have two flight, uh, major flight schools, uh, one right in our background here, Mach mm -hmm. 5. Across the street is Sunshine Flyers. They're both uh, training facilities and they have a number of different types of aircraft that you can train in. Everything from tailwheel aircraft on up to twin engine. And uh, they can take you from the basic student wow. flying up through any commercial and instrument ticket that you may desire. Cool. The uh, Auburn Aviation Association has a unique program yeah. where we sponsor a couple of uh, students youngsters uh, below uh, under the age of 21 mm -hmm. typically high schoolers that are interested in flying we do an interview process and out of that interview process we select a couple of recipients for our scholarship which is typically oh. a $2,500 to be applied here at the Auburn Airport through one wow. of the flight schools That's and we've fantastic. had some people that have uh, been through our initial program like that mm -hmm. that have gone on to fly for the Air Force the military wow. uh, instructors for colleges and what have you and one of them uh, out of North Dakota now is uh, flying for their aerobatic team so wow. they, we've had tremendous so success with these youngsters coming through our scholarship program so the association how many members do you have right now do you think right now we have about 135 to maybe 145 and I should have checked wow. that number but it's an active organization. We have monthly meetings here at the Barnstormer Room at the airport on the first 
Wednesday of each month. Okay. And do Except you have to be a pilot to be a part? No, it? you do not. Oh, okay. No, we have quite a few people attend that uh, we usually have a guest speaker. And so they come for, it's a buffet style dinner, a guest speaker and the social aspect of it. So okay. non-pilots are welcome. Now, are, is the association a part of the air festival that happens here? It used to be the festival sponsor. That was where ah. our scholarship money originally came from was the air show that we did here. Uh -huh. But it became, uh, we became a little long in tooth and burnout set mm. in. We were doing yeah. this show every other year in concert alternating with Nevada City. Right. And uh, so now we are basically a donor uh, Yeah. But you're still a real part kids. of it. And that's a that's a wonderful way to get to know the airport is to come to the when they have the air fest. That's a lot of fun. It is. And one of the things that we have been having is a Fly Friday thing. Uh, the oh. third Friday of each month during the summer. Yeah. We had a uh, little get together here at the airport in the afternoon and uh, we'd have a band come in. Uh, some uh, wow. people would set up their wares at tents and what have you like that. So it, it was fun. kind of a uh, afternoon air show. Is that going to keep happening? In I think Friday? that's uh, in the works for next year. Just All during right. The, uh, in summertime. During the summer. On Fridays. This is the Friday night place to be then. For sure. And so also the airport does things like, you. can you fly out of here? See, I need to hop over to San Francisco. Is that possible? It is. But to be honest with you, it's limited. And okay. so, but we do have the uh, facilities where you can uh, hire a pilot to fly you over there. Or if you're a pilot, check out an aircraft and fly it yourself. Oh, really? You can check out an aircraft? Here at the flight schools, they do have uh, aircraft for rent. Uh, you have to be qualified in that aircraft, and mm -hmm. if you're a first-timer at this facility, even though you may have lots of time, they're going to fly with you at least once or twice. Hello, this is uh, Jeff and Ann Barbaric with Auburn Extreme Power Sports. And we're here to uh, show you guys our new and latest product that we're that we're we have here at the shop now. Our Polaris slingshots, and uh, these are these came out about a year ago. And this is actually a three-wheeled uh, machine that is classified as a motorcycle, and uh, really cool because. Uh, since it's a motorcycle, you can go in a diamond lane, and um, uh, you know you, you actually just you know you, you don't actually have to have a motorcycle license to ride it, which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, but since it is classified as a motorcycle, you get away with a lot of stuff that you went with an automobile. And it's and, fun to drive. And so. it's really fun to drive. Yeah, especially yeah, she loves driving them. Favorite. <laughs> I'm more of a motorcycle guy, but she really likes these guys. Yes. But that's okay, because we have motorcycles here too, Victory Motorcycles. But um, yeah, um, great machines. Uh, we've been in business here since, uh, with, uh, we're one of the older Polaris businesses. We've been around since 1996. Uh, we moved to this location in 2010. Um, um, had a, had a brief, you know, times were pretty tough, and uh, we, we, I actually sold the business in 07, and the people I sold to, I, I repurchased it from them in 2010, and we've been back in business since 2010, having a great time. Uh, we, we do everything Polaris, uh, the slingshots, their ATVs, their, their side-by-sides, which are Razors and Rangers, uh, snowmobiles, and we really love snowmobiling, and this is a great area to snowmobile. We are Auburn Extreme Power Sports, located here in Auburn, and uh, we are run by riders for riders. Well, now here we are, Wayne and I, at the Bud Anderson Memorial and Statue here. Uh, tell us a little bit about Colonel Bud Anderson. 
of all, Colonel Bud Anderson uh, is a local boy from uh, Newcastle, lives here in Auburn now. He was a World War II pilot flying P-51s in Europe and he is uh, known as a triple ace, which is, uh, he has more than 15 downs, I should say. But, wow. uh, but he's still around. He's uh, very active in the aviation community even today. Wow. I think he's curtailed his flying a little bit, although I think he still could. <laughs> he's a very cordial gentleman and uh, really an airport enthusiast. In fact, he has lunch out here at Wings on a regular basis. So. Wow. He's definitely a local guy. One of the great pilots of history, right here, eating at wings, I'll tell you. It, it is. <laughs> uh, he, he flew, Chuck Yeager was his wingman, so that's what How I How about understand. that? And Chuck Yeager lives up in Nevada City somewhere, so. Yes, and he eats regularly at a friend of mine's Mexican restaurant, because he loves Mexican food. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of famous pilots here, but it's a place for pilots anyway, this airport and this area. Now tell us about the bricks I see in the ground here. Well, the bricks are originally, the statue was built by uh, Douglas Van Hout over here at the Van Hout Studios. The worldwide uh, dispersion of his statues, uh, some are, or at least one is in the White House today. So mm -hmm. he's very well known wow. and uh, he created this statue and along with it, the bricks that are around the base of it here, mm -hmm are engraved with whatever you can do in three lines and uh, X number of letters across, but they are $500 per brick. You don't have to be a pilot to have an engraved brick out here. And the money goes toward the Colonel Bud Anderson Scholarship Fund. Wow. So approximately $30 for laying in the ground with the cement and also the rest of the $500 goes directly to a scholarship fund that's for wonderful. the youth uh, trying to learn how to get into the aviation as a career. Wow, and now who would someone call to buy a brick? Well, you can go online with auburnaviationassociation.org All right. and uh, there are instructions on how to obtain a brick. All right, well thank you so much and now you said we could go over and, and see one of the aircraft here that's interesting. Well, you were talking earlier about experimental aircraft, and now I see over my shoulder here that there is one out here, and I've All talked right. to him. He said we're welcome to use it as a backdrop. And here we have a pilot that came in from Lodi today. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Ken Cantrell. And one of the reasons we were attracted to uh, this plane, Wayne said, it's one of the experimentals we were talking about, right? It is, and uh, a very nice uh, example, by the way. And so tell us, you built this yourself. Yes, I did. Uh, in the late 90s, probably 98, I, uh, I decided to build this. Uh, I was born into a flying family. My mother was a flight instructor. My dad flew in World War II, and he flew after the War II, and so I was our family activity. So I was around airplanes, I was an airport rat basically, and I was around uh, the airport all the time and so it was, uh, aviation was naturally uh, part of who I was and still am. And uh, when I, I, in my younger days, I in fact I flew up here at Auburn, I did an air show a couple of years in a row up here in the late 70s. and. Uh, you know, and, and I flew the airplane at that time was another airplane different than this that my dad built. And, uh, and then when I started my family, I got away from aviation. And then late 90s, I decided to get back into it. And so this is the airplane I built. And uh, it took me about four years, almost four years. And uh, you build it in separate pieces, the wings and the tail and the fuselage separately. So you can actually build it in a small place like a garage. And uh, it's just one little step at a time. And, uh, and the, the support group from, uh, it's actually Vans Aircraft out of Oregon is, is excellent in helping builders, uh, you know, work their way through the project. And like I said, it's many, there's a lot of help out there. If anybody's interested in home-built uh, aircraft, there's a lot of other people that do it and a lot of people that can help you learn. Well, that's really interesting to know that people can do that. Now, you said you're here to buy the pits. We're going to be looking at that. What, what's great about that plane? Why do you want it? Well, the pits is... Uh, Actually, it's the same design that my dad built. Curtis Pitts was a designer out of Florida that uh, originally designed 
the pits in the mid 40s, 1940s, and uh, back in the 60s and uh, late 50s, 60s, it was the airplane to have for competition aerobatics and air show work. Uh, since then, there's been a lot of other designs that have uh, taken it way beyond that level and that are uh, much more desire desirable for the real professionals. Now, here we are in front of the pits, Wayne. How old is that pits? Well, uh, they were built, uh, designed by a, a fellow named Curtis Pitts back in Florida back in the late 40s. They have won a number of uh, national championships uh, in aerobatics over the years, and now there are a lot of them flying around. They are typically a home-built airplane. You buy, the, you buy the plans and you build from scratch. Wow. They are also available now as a production-type aircraft. I mean, many years later from the original design. They've gone to four ailerons, the symmetrical airfoil, the two-place pits where the original was a single place. So there's been uh, evolution of this airplane and it's still just as desirable as an aerobatic plane as it was back in its heyday. So, cool, aerobatic it, plane. Yeah. How fun is that? I know I put my husband in one once and they do all the loops and the smoke and all the fun stuff. Yeah, and they probably would have turned green if they had really unwound it, so. But <laughs> <laughs> they can become quite violent when you start doing the hard maneuvers. Oh, I but, bet. Uh, but uh, they're a challenge to fly. They're short coupled, and uh, they're not for the uh, inexperienced pilot, I would say. So you can see great aircraft here. You can come and learn about historic aircraft. You can see so many things here. Wow, it's, it's a pretty exciting place, the airport. It is, and uh, our airport is accessible. So if you are out here and you're having lunch, you can walk out here on the outdoor patio, look around. If you see something nearby, just be really careful around turning props and moving aircraft, but keep your children in check and your dogs on a leash. It's a really accessible airport. Okay. And it's here in the middle of our industrial or business park. So as I mentioned earlier, we have quite a few uh, commercial industries uh, right here on mm -hmm. the field, basically. OK, well, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure. We enjoy it very much, the tour well, of the airport. My pleasure. It's a different way to spend Saturday, which I spend a lot of Saturdays out here. So as you can see, there's a little activity. The weather was a little iffy last night, so I think it turned a few people off, but usually Saturday is a very busy day here. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, thanks again, and now we're going to go shoot some aircraft around the field here. Okay. Well, thank you, Heather. I've enjoyed the interview. Me too. Thanks, okay. Wayne. Okay. and pilot of a gyrocopter and what's your name? Doug Smith. And where are you from? Lincoln. Now isn't it unusual to have a gyrocopter? They're becoming a lot more popular in the last couple of years and um, these designs are from Europe and they've been a big thing in Europe for about 15 years and they're just starting to come out more over here. There's a lot more of them over on the east coast and down in Texas. Now you actually made this, how long did that take? No, I didn't make no. this. I bought it from the guy who bought it from the guy who made it. These are really fast to build. You could build one of these in a week. Really? Yes, I was talking to a guy who went to Italy and built one um, two weeks ago. And he said he went in on the Monday looking at the boxes and they flew it on the Friday. Now, a gyrocopter, what's a difference between a gyrocopter and say a helicopter? So on the gyroplane, the rotor isn't powered. Ah, okay. So the wind going through the rotor makes the rotor turn and that generates lift. And how high can they go? Um, we can legally get to about 13,000 feet. Then you need oxygen. Somebody's flown one of these to 20,000 feet. Wow, it sounds like a lot of fun. Is it, there's a lot more gyro enthusiasts going on around here? It's becoming more popular. We're seeing more and more people. So three years ago, there was one instructor. Um, now we've got three instructors in the area. 
there are three gyros based at Lincoln now. At Lincoln yes. Airport. And so you, and why do you come up here to Auburn? I actually ran into Mike at Sunshine Flyers on Wednesday, and he said they were having an open house day, so I said, fine, I'll come up. Heather McDonald here, and I'm about to have some great Mexican food here at Maria's Mexican Tacos, right in front of the bowling alley on Bowman Road, right off I-80 here in Auburn. And here I am with the owner. Introduce yourself to everybody out there. Hi, my name is Maria Moreno, and I uh, own Maria's Mexican Tacos since 2001. Wow, you've been here a while, and you have quite the fans out there, and I can see why, because look at this beautiful food, and this is just a little bit of what she serves here. Yes. Now, what are these called? This is uh, the sopes we made with the, um, any kind of meat you like, and um, get us the meat, a Mexican cheese, and um, veggies on top, and with aguacado. This is the tacos. We made, that's the soft. So we make soft and we make hard shells either way. And uh, this is the tostadas. We made with any kind of meat, like this is the nachos with any kind of meat you like, or they can be a vegetarians. And now over there I see the chile relleno, my favorite. This is the chile relleno, comes with tortillas on the side, or they can be with rice and beans. And um, the other ones, that's the hard shell tacos. And the other plates, that's enchiladas, that comes with rice and beans. The other plates is uh, a burrito, burrito wet, and they can be any kind of meat. It's beautifully done, too. Normally we have uh, aguas frescas, we have beer, we have wine, we have sodas, Mexican sodas. And look at the size of that nacho plate. Now that look delicious. Now tell us some of the variety of meats you can get here. There's a lot of different kinds. Okay, you can uh, get like carne asada. We can get chicken or carnitas, que that's the more famous we sell, the carnitas. Chile verde, chile colorado, and plus tamales. Yes. They can be tamales with any kind of meat. Uh, chicken, beef, or pork, or they can be vegetarians. Yes, I've watched her make the tamales by hand. Now, if you're used to authentic Mexican food, she also has tripa. We have tripa, we have cabeza, we have lengua, and we have buche. Uh-huh. They have a lot of the authentic dishes for sure. And your sauces look so beautiful too that you have here. This is the green salsa for enchiladas and then we would use it for enchiladas or wet burritos. Yes, and you have the uh, delicious salsas that you can come here to with the chips and everything. Then we have chips and salsa, and um, they can be the green is um, salsa spicy, and the red is salsa mayo. And then you also have a patio too. We have a beautiful patio, and we open for parties or anything. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for coming. Yes, Maria's Mexican Tacos is more than just tacos, as you can see here off Bowman Road near I-80. into your store. Now I want you to tell everybody out there what kind of fashions you have in here. Well, we have, uh, life's too short to wear ordinary fashions, I say. <laughs> so we have fashions that aren't ordinary. They have to pop. When a customer comes in, they want to say, wow, I have to have that. Because women have lots of clothes in their wardrobe. They really don't need them, but they have to have more because 
that we get we get bored with our clothes. We want something new right. for the new season. So because clothes do get dated, so you have to update your wardrobe every season. So bold jewelry is in. Yeah, I bold saw jewelry that. is in. This. Like I have on bold jewelry. Fringe uh -huh. is in. Lace oh, yeah. is in. And I have to work with body, uh, customers' body types. When I look at a customer, we want to make her look tall and thin, right? Yes, thank you. Right? So <laughs> well, they're together, trying to make her taller, taller thinner. I do. and much thinner because, see, we've layered a piece over. The, pe mm -hmm. the way women look the best when they have mature figures, and that's most of my customers have mature figures. You wear mm -hmm. something made black like I've done and then put an over piece, and it really takes 10 pounds off you. That's right. And so I try to put, and then tunics and leggings are the hot item. Yeah. Women love tunics and leggings. They are very complimentary and flattering. But if the lady doesn't have real small legs, then we put a wider leg pad on her. So. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we all have Great. to dress according to our figure and body type. And that's what I really take into consideration. When I put a lady in the fitting room, sometimes I see her take things in the fitting room. I say, none of those are going to look good on her. So I quickly find the top pant dress or something I know is going to work mm -hmm. for her. And then she comes out smiling. That's right. <laughs> she really cares about her yeah. customers. Do you hear this? Yeah. And so you have so much variety. And besides clothing, we'll say quickly, she also can mm -hmm. accessorize you. They have some mm -hmm. shoes, bags, jewelry, glasses, scarves. I got my beautiful silk scarf here at Maryland. Laurel Birch. Laurel Birch. Yes. So thanks <laughs> so much for being with us. Oh, my pleasure. And thanks for outfitting me. My I get a lot of compliments <laughs> since I've been shopping at Maryland's. Thank you. <laughs>